One of Governor Simcoe's most notable achievements was the limitation of slavery. Simcoe passed legislation that allowed for gradual abolition. Slaves already in the province would remain enslaved until death, but no new slaves could be brought into Upper Canada, and children born to female slaves would be freed at age 25. This effectively ended all slavery by 1810. The first black citizens of Oxford came up with Peter Lossing and the Quakers. Many stopped in a little community south of Norwich known as Otterville. In the days before the Civil War, from Mississippi right up to uh, New York State and Pennsylvania, it was the Quakers, uh, uh, to a large extent, who helped uh, organize and provided safe houses along the Underground Railway. The first blacks that came here were free, free blacks from New York State, and they had money when they came and, and purchased, purchased the land. Uh, one landowner, uh, Jones, was able to purchase 150 acres, for instance, which was a fair-sized track. And then there was the mill that was in Otterville, too. So a lot of the blacks that were associated in Norwich probably moved into Otterville because of the, the employment. It wasn't a separate settlement. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't a case of escaped slaves on this side of the creek, everybody else on the other. They, they were mixed in with the community. You couldn't particularly tell by going past somebody's house whether it was a Quaker house or whether it was a, a black house or whether it was an Irish house or anything. It was, uh, um, everybody, was, everybody was pretty much there together on an equal footing. I, I think that uh, everybody was uh, in, in the same boat. Everybody was doing the same thing. Everybody was trying to, to uh, cut trees and build houses and, and, and uh, you know, produce crops and survive. The settlement that was northwest of, of Otterville was the largest, and there were enough blacks there to, to establish a school. Uh, very soon after they came, uh, the Canada Mission and other organizations uh, helped to provide teachers. And uh, the school records, it was SS number uh, 18, the school records indicate that it was um, a, a comparable school to the rest of the township. It was first class, it had a, a first class teacher, and it had a large number of students. They had their own church, which they built in, in 1856, and they built that just, uh, just north of Otterville, opposite the Anglican church of the time. But they were famous for their camp meetings. Large groups of people, and the numbers I've seen were over a thousand, uh, getting together for two or three days, camping out in tents, and, uh, and it would be a, a religious meeting that would go on for two or three days with singing and preaching and testifying and, and everybody there together, probably, uh, probably staying up half the night uh, uh, doing hymn things or whatever else. But according to the newspapers, the, uh, the attendance at these things was, uh, was not just not just black, not just white. It was it was a it was a, a mixed attendance. I think at first people were you know were very happy and glad that they escaped such a horrendous conditions in, in the states as slaves. But by the time they came here, I think that novelty sort of worn off, um, and they were you know they were mistreated. A lot of them were denied services in restaurants and stagecoach, um, uh, steamboats. In terms of uh, Oxford County, um, you know, they probably weren't treated that well, and I think that's where a lot of them did leave. If they did have employment, the, the pay was very low. So a lot of them probably would have left to go into larger cities where they wouldn't, you know, where they'd probably get more money for their employment. The slaves who had come through Ingersoll had also been led to safety by the Quakers. They were concealed in a church until suitable quarters were found for them. They were able to, um, to escape from slavery, to go to Ingersoll, um, to hide up in the attic of the church. Uh, the next morning, they would be taking um, through carriages to, to other farms where they'd be probably stay and work. Soon, the blacks of Ingersoll felt the need to build their own church, and the British Episcopal Church was built in 1858. Some of the blacks remained in Ingersoll for 30 years, but gradually left for other settlements such as Dresden, Hamilton, St. Catharines, and Toronto. When the slaves were freed after the American Civil War, many returned to the USA. There's very little left to see. The one thing that you can go and look at, which is actually, I find quite 
quite touching is the African Methodist Episcopal Cemetery, and uh, it's got one stone in it. You can see the gate with the name of the cemetery over it, and it, was, it had been attached to a church next door. And it's in a beautiful grove of trees, and uh, it's still, it's a quiet place, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's really nicely maintained. And what always strikes me there is, is think about the people who are, who are lying there, and they, they ended up in Oxford County, ended up in, in Otterville, and uh, look around and, and just wonder where, where they started out.